What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to show you guys about CV Spawns. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Before we get started, I wanna once again thank Maxon for having me on for the NAB Live this year. It was a lot of fun. And I had a lot of questions, especially about how I use Top of Wire with Unreal for the open. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I'll leave a link down in the description below of my Maxon talk. I went in about like an hour about how to integrate Cinema 40 into Unreal to make this opening sequence here. If you watch NAB Live, you've seen it a billion times playing through. But the one part in particular that I wanted to show you guys about was between these buildings, I have these giant cables connecting some of the buildings here. And for that example that we did for NAB Live, I actually used Topo Wire to connect these two together. But it recently came to my attention that if you have a Cineversity account, there's actually something very similar to Top of Wire that you get with your subscription to Cineversity, which is called CV Spline. And it pretty much does the same thing. It's not dynamic, but we can still get the different hanging cables here. And so let me show you exactly how we use that. But first, let me open up the website here. So if I come over to Cineversity.com, like I said, if you have an active account, this already comes with your subscription. But if you come down to Toolbox and then go to Download Installer, you just want to download that installer and then install it into your Cinema 4D. I'm still using R21 right now, but recently they just released S22. And so whatever version you're using, this should work on it. And so you want to come to your Cineversity, download Installer, get that installed. And then when you come up to your extensions, you'll actually see that whatever you have installed. So first you'll come down to CV Toolbox. You click on this and you see you have like a whole bunch of different things at your disposal, like moves by Maxon that just came out. You have Art Smart that will allow you to bring in splines from Illustrator. But the thing that you want to install, let me see if it's still on here since I did install it. I'm not seeing it, but if you come, everything that you download is going to be in your extensions. And so what it's called is CV splines. And once you install that, you have a whole plethora of different options here. What I'm going to show you is the CV catenary and the CV cross stitch to kind of do that same thing that Top of Wire does. So let me exit out of this and let me start off with a real simple example. So I'm going to start off with just making a simple spline. So if I come up to my spline tool here, click spline pen, and I'm going to look in my, let's say my right view. Let me enlarge this and I'm just going to make a straight spline. Nothing too crazy here. All right, I'm gonna go back to my perspective view. So I have a spline that's sitting here in my scene. And so I can real easily turn this into a wire by coming up to extensions, come down to CV splines, come down to CV catenary, and then bring the spline under here. And now you can see that we're getting the arch down here. And if I come over here to my attributes window, you see under options, we can actually sag this less or more. And then you can also add variation. Like if you have several of these, you can add variation to the sag. And then you can also add more points to it. Like if it's looking kind of janky, you can kind of, um, let me go the opposite direction, but you can add more or less points to this. You don't want to go too crazy, but that's just a real simple example of how you could get it started. But the cool thing about this is we can actually turn this into a mesh by using a sweep. So if I come over to sweep, and then let's just make a circle like so. And we're gonna make it a little bit smaller cause this is gonna be the width of our wire here. And then we bring these both underneath this, um, the sweep here. So now we have a geometry that's made out of that spline there and we still have full control over it. It's non-destructive so we can add more sag to it, less sag to it, etc. So now let me show you how to use this with the MoGraph cloner. I think that's the most powerful point or the most powerful part of this. So let me delete my sweep here. Let me come over to my MoGraph cloner like so. And then let's maybe, let's do a cube. So I'm gonna put a cube in here. Let's make this a little bit smaller, like 20 by 20 by 20. And then I'm gonna bring that cube into my cloner. And then let me click on cloner and in my Y axis, I'm going to bring this down to zero and actually let's move this out on my Z space. So maybe somewhere, let's do like 500 and let's add a little bit more, maybe like six. 
somewhere around there. All right, so you can see that we have six cubes going in a straight line over here. So if I come up to my extensions, come down to CV splines, and then I'm going to use cross stitch first. So CV cross stitch, click on that. And you can see that we have under object where it says root cloner. We're just going to click and drag our cloner under there. And now you can see it automatically made a spline in between all of our different cubes. And what's cool is this is totally dynamic with our cloner. And so if I come and let's say move. So if I do step rotation and you can see we're moving this around in our spline is moving around with it. And if that's a little bit hard to see on the screen, I can actually come over and we'll just put it underneath the sweep again. So let me come over here. Let's make another sweep. And then I'm going to make another circle. Make my radius around like two. Drop my sweep or drop my circle under my sweep. My cross stitch under there. Then now you can see that we have geometry going between our cubes. And if I turn off my cube, you can actually see now we just have our spline going there. And if I mess around with this step rotation, you can see that it's following it all around. So I know you're wondering what about adding like sagging stuff because this is all just in a straight line. So the cool thing is we can actually add in the CV catenary and we can get the sag like we had before. So let me turn my cubes back on and I'm going to zero these back out on my step rotation. So I'm going to come under my extensions, come under CV catenary, the first one here. And then I want to bring my cloner underneath that. No, I'm sorry, not my cloner. I want to bring cross stitch underneath that. So now that I have my catenary up top, I have as a parent of my cross stitch. And now you see we're getting the sag in between all of our cubes here. And the same thing as before, if I move this around, it's following everything there. And I can actually come over to my circle and I can move this radius up a little bit more so we can actually see it. And I actually have to bring this underneath my sweep here. So let me drag this under here. There we go. So now there we go radius around six. So now you can see the power of this. So we have it inside of a cloner. We can actually move this all around like so. Let me zero this out because it doesn't stop there. Let me say I want to add like a random effector to that. So if I come under MoGraph effectors and let's go under random. There you go somewhere like this. So let's maybe like 1500. 1250 so you can see where I'm going with this so it's moving all around so no matter what it's going to be combined in between each one of our spheres here that we have generated by the cloner so you could just have a bunch of fun with it like even like um let me do this so if I come to make another geometry let's make a sphere I'm gonna turn off my random right now and then under my cloner under mode I'm gonna click on object I'm actually going to bring my sphere in as my object. Let me see. Can I turn this off? There we go. And let me make my sphere maybe a radius of like 600. Do I need to turn it back on? There you go. So there's just a little bit of stepage in there. But each one of these cubes is actually going along the surface of the sphere here. You can actually control this even more by, let me see, I want to turn off fixed clone. No. Let me see, where's my, click random. Oh, it's because my sphere is not editable. So if I hit C, there we go. So now I could go to like vertices. Let me turn my sphere back off. So we're getting some crazy designs in here. So you just have to play around with it and see what you guys can come up with. But like I was saying, if you have a subscription with your Maxon account, this comes with Cineversity. So you don't have to use any third party plugins. This comes with your package. And so hopefully you guys go explore on Cineversity inside the toolbox to see what other cool stuff you can find in there. 
So hopefully this helped you guys out and showed you something new. Once again, thank you, Max on for having me this week on NAB Live. It was a lot of fun. And like I was saying, I used Top of Wire for that original intro. But if you have a Cineversity account, you have full access to the CV Spline tool. And, you know, if I knew about this before, I would have probably used this one since it did come with this suite. But hopefully this helped you out. Like I said, if this did help you out, make sure you leave me a comment down below. As always, subscribe to the channel. Stay fresh. Keep creating. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.